All right, everybody. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. You're going to get a little bit of a look at my process. This is my brand new tank. I just set this up the other day. Right now it is nothing more than a simple crayfish tank. I've got a few crayfish in there from the stream across the street from my house. And I'll eventually probably put a couple of little minnows or something in there. The crayfish may or may not eat them. This is just going to be sort of a fun little tank that I can play with over the summer. I really want to do a native tank, but I just don't have room for it at the moment. I can, however, throw this little 10 gallon together, and that's what I've done. So, so far, we have this. I put this together yesterday, just, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes. Um, I've got this piece of acrylic on top. A friend of mine made that for me last year for this very purpose. Uh, crayfish are climbers, and they will climb right up and out of the tank. Uh, especially if you have a cord like I do that comes off of this tetrafauna uh, filter. That is uh, internal filtration in there. It's just got a couple of simple filter pads. And right now the tank is not cycled in or anything. I'm doing daily water changes on it. Uh, believe it or not, just with the two little crayfish or three little crayfish in there, there's a pretty heavy bio load uh, for the roughly two gallons of water I have in there, maybe three gallons of water tops that I have in there. So right now we are just kind of playing with ideas of how to put it together and what to do with it. If you see those plants moving, you'll notice that that crayfish down there on the right is actually shoving those plants around already as he crawls through there. Uh, these are industrious little guys. So the plant you see there uh, is just kind of stuck into the gravel very, very loosely. It's not planted or, or rooted in at all yet. And we're going to go see the plant that that came from in just a moment. This plant right here is simply a temple plant that I stuck in there from another tank. So again, just stuck in the gravel. Obviously, I set this tank up yesterday. Nothing is rooted in yet. Uh, and I have a piece of java fern back there sort of wedged between two pieces of rock. So far, that is all that's in there. I did have a plant in a pot sitting on top of the rocks. The plant is actually a... Uh, I don't know the actual species of plant, but when I bought it, I spoke with the woman at the nursery. She wasn't sure either, but we both think that it's related to a philodendron. And if that's the case, I should be able to grow it in water, provided it is well oxygenated water and it grows up and out. Very similar to a pothos plant. Um, they're related, but they're not the same. So that's what this is right here. This is actually a little broken piece of that. And... I really like it. I don't know whether it's going to work or not, and I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I'll give you a little uh, teaser. We'll go around the room real quick right here. My 20 long that I've been doing some work on is where the rest of that piece went that broke off. I actually just stuck it in here. You can see the broken end uh, right there. So we're going to see how well that does just floating in water, but I really like it. I really like those shield shaped leaves. I like the, uh, it's not really variegation. It's almost like a modeling on the leaves, the coloration. So as you can see, I'm working on the brackish tank again too. Always got lots of stuff going on here in the fish room. So I'll throw in my usual clause that if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do so because you never know what you're going to miss if you're not. So back to this tank, what do I want to do with it? Um, well, let's go look at some of the things I've brought inside so far. I have so many things out in the yard that could work in this tank, and I real briefly went outside and looked at a few things, um, but there's plenty more we can look at. So let's go over to my work area, and we'll see what I've got so far. All right, this is just a few things I picked up real quickly. This is the plant I was talking about, and if you will see, uh, this is where the main chunk broke off that is now in my 20 long. And then I broke this little piece here off, and that is in the crayfish tank. So this is going to go back outside and keep on growing. This is probably going to wind up in the crayfish tank, but what's going to go in it is still remains to be seen. This is some very inappropriately named sensitive fern. This stuff is tough as nails, uh, but it's very pretty and super hardy. And when I pulled it out of the ground, of course, a bunch of moss and grass came with it. So that's probably going to top off whatever goes in the bottom. Uh, soil wise I'm probably going to just do a little bit of soil and do a hosta and then do some of this stone crop hanging out so we get a little bit of a, a dangling effect it'll sort of eventually wind up turning back upwards and growing this way and this is actually almost ready to flower so I don't know if I'm actually going to get flower or not since I've just broken it and pulled it off of the plant outside this is creeping Jenny 
and super easy to propagate you can see I simply just broke pieces off of the plant stick these in soil stick them in water either way they will begin growing and they will grow very quickly and very vigorously so what I think we're going to wind up doing with these is putting these in something uh, small so you don't notice the container so much and then we're going to have these sort of hanging and growing down off of my fake waterfall and possibly even with the water running through the leaves themselves to give a little more effect I can also use this to cover a little bit of this pot so you don't notice it sitting up on top of the rocks uh, this stuff is really versatile I'm actually thinking about putting some of this in my 20 long as well you can either put it in the water and have it grow up and out of the tank you can have it out of the tank and grow over and into the water lots of stuff you can do with creeping Jenny the more light you give it the more golden yellow it will get it does flower it gets a very pretty yellow flower on it really good stuff if you've got an open top tank or if you've got a palindarium or something where you're going to get exposure to uh, oxygenated water and surface oxygen so that's just what we've got to play with right now um, I think we will do one brief little stint around the yard and we can look at a few of the other options I could have brought in but decided not to I just picked a few of these real quickly and then I will get over to getting them sorted out and put them in the tank and we can see how we can play around with them in different areas of the tank uh, to change up the look and feel of it so sit tight and next time I see you we'll be outside in the yard all right everybody this is the bed that we got uh the plants that we got from but let me start by saying our lawnmower is broken and we have not mowed the lawn since may so if you take a brief look around you can see the yard looks like a shaggy meadow and as a result i have hostas and ferns and you name it it's coming up everywhere they're just coming up in the yard and growing all over the place so normally we have our choice of anything out of the beds and this year we've got our choice out of anything we want to just pick right out of the yard speaking of which squeaker just popped right out of one of the beds so we were over here and we just spent about five minutes looking around and what I opted for was some of this sensitive fern here but we could have done some of this coreopsis uh, that's pretty yellow flower provided it's grown in a flower pot that's exposed above the water level and has aerated water you can do a lot of plants that you would not necessarily think about as being aquarium plants I considered some of this Japanese painted fern uh, but opted against it um, we actually came up through here this isn't really a path but I'm allowed to walk through my own garden beds so we considered this one which is a ghost fern and quite beautiful I just don't know how that would look in the tank so we stayed away from that we could have done some of this which is Christmas fern uh, there's just lots and lots of stuff out here we could use in the yard that you might not normally think of being associated with an aquarium but provided you've got the conditions right and you know the needs of your plant here's some pothos plant uh, everybody knows you can put pothos plant in an aquarium what's in that hanging basket up there is peace lily um, a lot of people call that Brazilian sword and put it in their aquariums if you do it right uh, you can grow that long term underwater uh, the final place we stopped was over here. Uh, Squeaker's looking at this butterfly on top of one of these cone flowers. There's a little bonus footage for you, everybody. A beautiful butterfly that's probably about to get eaten by a cat. Nope. He missed. <laughs> So what I did was I came over here to where this is growing and I pilfered a bunch of this Creeping Jenny right there that's hanging down. That's why it's all spread out and sparse looking like that. It was much thicker and it actually covered that unattractive box we have the planter sitting on. So that'll grow back in no time and you won't be able to see that box and the same thing will happen in the basement when we tuck that into a nice little planter and then we drape it over it'll hang down into the water and you won't see a lot of the different stuff. So let's go back inside and we will see what we've got going on and what we can and can't do with what we've got in there already. Alright well that's what I've done so far. 
and honestly there's not a whole lot more I can do with it this is only a 10 gallon tank and they're not really spacious they're not exactly known for uh, being able to do a ton of stuff above and below the water so I more or less did what I said I wanted to do I set this off into this corner you can see I have some of the creeping Jenny growing down into the center and then I have some of that stone crop on either side and the hosta will stand back up there in the back corner and then of course the fern you can see I have staked up for the moment but if that starts growing and doing well I should get some new shoots of fern coming up that hosta should start doing okay and that should all start growing in and doing better and the same with the creeping Jenny here you can see I've got it uh, pretty much draped down across the waterfall and down into the water and that is nothing more than creeping Jenny in a small flower pot and that is just there to more or less disguise that filter. The filter is fairly uh, natural enough looking but this gives me a little more texture, a little more color, it hides that cord a little bit and I always like having plants in the tank. Now these plants are not going to be drawing any nutrients from the tank that is in a pot above the water uh, this actually does sit down in the water just a little bit. The bottom uh, half inch of that pot is in the water and it will draw its moisture up through there. So as long as it's oxygenated water and as long as these plants have uh, access to atmospheric oxygen, everything will be fine and they will not actually drown. Uh, plants only drown when you keep them in stagnant water and you overwater them in a standing flower pot. Um, this is an actual aerated tank. Um, with running water in it so that's a completely different situation than simply overwatering a tank I mean overwatering a plant a house plant uh, when you do that what happens is the water becomes stagnant in the pot it uses up all the oxygen the the water that's standing in the soil becomes anaerobic and therefore starts to become acidic and you actually start dissolving the roots of your house plant away if you've ever had an overwatered house plant you can tell it's got that weird stinky bog like smell to it when you unpot it um, that's actually the roots being dissolved in acid that is what's causing that smell so I won't get any of that because I've got oxygenated water um, because it's being circulated in this fish tank and these plants will do just fine being in essentially what you could think of as standing water so this one here will not that is not in standing water uh, when these um, trailers get long enough they'll get down into the water uh, they may actually start developing roots or they may float across the surface and it will probably draw some moisture up out of the water at that point and then start taking some of the nutrients out of the water as well so that's what we've got so far and I don't know how long it'll stay this way. I don't know if it'll stay this way. Um, this is just a little creative outlet for me. It gives me something to tinker with and play with. I get to look at different things and try different color combinations and different textures. And again, it's just something to play with. And I'll probably do this for a few months. And as the uh, summer starts ending and the weather starts getting cooler, I'll let go. You know, I'll release anything that I've got living in there at the time and throw all the plants back out in the yard and break it all down for the winter. But for now, we've got the rest of the summer to look forward to. So go ahead and subscribe if you're not already and that way you won't miss anything i've got coming up with this or any of my other tanks i got a lot going on right now so thanks for watching and i'll see you real soon in the next one